Hey, this is David Payne, Oak River Harmonicas, and I'm going to show you how to flat sand a harmonica comb, uh, starting with a piece of granite, and I've got granite here because it's the flattest thing, at least, that, that I'm able to, to get without, you know, having somebody machine something or something, but it's perfectly flat enough, and the first thing you'll need to do is clean it off, because if there's a, like a little piece of wood or a little piece of gravel there, It'll get under the sandpaper, and we'll make it um, make it not be level. The whole point of everything is the sandpaper needs to be level. So we're going to clean it off. I've got a piece of foam here, which works really well. So we'll clean off just anything that might just a piece of foam, anything that might be on there. So I've got a piece of wet, well, two pieces, we'll say, two pieces of wet and dry sandpaper. This is 1,200. And I like to finish up poems right there. And here is oh, that's another piece of toilet. Where's that 150 I had? We'll start out with 150. Here's a piece of 150. And uh, we're not just gonna lay it down yet. We're actually gonna take some water first. We'll apply this water to the to the stone, and we'll slather it around. And what the water does is it gives the sandpaper something to stick to. When you put water on something. That's why we're using wet, dry sandpaper, by the way. You put water on something, looks like I got a little bit too much. But when you put water on something, it creates a vacuum, and uh, it will keep that paper flat. Ooh, I didn't get too much water. It's hard to do this with a camera in one hand and looking at the camera. But it's on there flat now. So now, you can take, and I'm just thinking of stuff that you might have around the house. You can take another harmonica comb. Here's an American chestnut comb. You can take another comb and lay it down and lay it down the opposite way. So like we got comb teeth pointing to the left on the comb we're sanding. We got teeth pointing to the right on the one we're laying on top of it. And this um, basically just evens out the pressure because you don't really want any pressure on it at all. You don't want to push down because you're going to wind up getting um, sanding down more the parts that you're pushing down. So this is basically to kind of even up the pressure. We're not actually exacting any pressure, really. We're not pushing down at all. Um, but even just from just the movement, you'll still wind up pushing down. Um, the way I found to counteract that is by kind of squeezing hard on the ends, like this. You can't really see me squeezing hard, but I'm squeezing with some pressure and then a finger in the center and that has been the flattest way I've been able to do this by hand and um, normally I have another hand holding the sandpaper in place I'm going to use this anvil that my grandpa got back in the 50's and he gave it to me when I was a kid to crack nuts on <laughs> hopefully that'll that'll keep it keep it in place here so I'm just going to take this comb and I'm not really pushing down at all and I'm holding it on the sides my fingers are sticking out a little bit on this comb because it's basically going to catch the comb that's underneath it. So I'm going to be kind of, you know, pushing it, and what's going to be pushing it will be my fingers from the side. Now you can also use a piece of double stick tape and tape this comb and tape it to the next comb. That's actually makes more sense, and I use it sometimes. I just don't have any right now, so I'm going back to this old method that I've got. So basically, you're just going to take the comb and work it back and forth, like that. And then what I do is I'll take the, take the whole thing and I'll flip it around. And that's just to um, even, out all the, even out the motions, in case my sanding motion makes it come off a little bit more on one, one end than the other, or something like that. Just in case, I'm flipping it over. I'll do a few strokes like that. And then I'll do a few... Well, this time i got to put my finger on the back here and you want to be careful too that you don't get your fingers on the sandpaper because you can without really realizing it sand part of your finger off so being careful here I'm going to now do like a circular motion but I do try to vary those motions a little bit just in case my motion favors one spot over another I flip them around and do it circular I go back and forth and I flip it around back and forth the other way and then switch sandpaper 
and we've got plenty of water here for another sandpapering. Now I'm going to go ahead and clean it off anyway, just in case there's some kind of dust or something from the first one. It's still wet, I think it'll be fine. So now I'll put the 1200, ordinarily you'd probably put you know, like a 500 down or a 400 and graduate up to um, the 1200. But for the purposes of this video, this is fine. Okay, now we're just doing the same thing over again. Circular, back and forth. I'm do, sometimes I'll do a front to back. You know, just try to vary these motions as much as I can. So that is flat sanding. Oh, yeah. Here's another neat little trick I came up with. And this is marking the, um, the comb. And what I'm going to do here is, um, yeah, normally you might want to use a pencil. But uh, for purposes of seeing, in, seeing it in this video, I'm going to use a marker. And let's uh, take a marker. This is hard to do in all the camera. Let's take a marker and just make lines across the comb. And ordinarily, I'm going to use a pencil. And ordinarily, the lines would be straighter because I'd actually be able to hold this thing. But I'm making lines all the way down through this. You know, the purpose of this is I'll be able to see what wood is coming off by how, uh, well, how the marks come off. So when I actually start sanding this thing, it's going to tell me a couple things. It's going to tell me, hey, first of all, am I applying even pressure? So I'm going to take a few strokes and immediately I'm going to look at this. Okay, That might not necessarily come off evenly. But uh, what I'm looking for, actually you can see right away, I think you can see, if I mark that, I don't remember if I even marked that up or not, I'll try it again and sand it again. It looks like the wood might be high right there, either that or I marked that part. You're going to watch how this is coming off. So what you're going to especially be careful of is whether you've got it just coming off the ends. If you're just taking wood off the ends consistently, you're probably applying some pressure uh, on the ends when you're pushing down. You don't want to push down at all really. You want to use like no pressure at all. So let's take a few more swipes. Oh actually um, I think I've got some yeah I got some 60 grit here. Let me use it. Okay. All right, now it's the the marker is coming off right here. That indicates to me that that part of the comb is high, and there's always some part that's high that comes off first. What well, I'm especially looking for, and uh, you might have a different situation, would be if you just have wood coming off in the middle or on the ends. That could imply that that uh, you're using too much pressure. I think this looks good. So it's coming off in that one spot, and it's not really a spot where you put pressure down anyway. Of course, I know I'm not putting down any pressure. And also, if your sandpaper is um, riding up on the end, you might have some kind of... Oh, yeah, here. Yeah, see, the whole comb is, is uh, high on this side. So as you can see, it's coming off down here at the bottom. And typically, they're, they are high in one part, or they're high on the tips of the comb teeth. Or someplace. So you go ahead and flip this around and then sand. So I actually have to use this thing now. <laughs> okay. Get it again. Okay, so now, now you see it's taking wood off of here all the way down through here. So all this was hot. Which you cannot really have a good harmonica without a flat corn. Okay, see, I mean, you can see how it's kind of creeping here. Now we're starting to take wood off these other places. So what we're looking for is uh, uniformity, of course. We're looking for uniform flatness. So we're going to take all these marks off. And then you might want to mark it again. And when you mark it the second time, the... Um, the marks should be coming off if it's flat. When you mark it the second time, it should be coming off evenly across the board. 
and you wouldn't have a situation like we did have earlier where we had the, um, the marks coming off in one spot or one region. You would have them coming off uniformly if it's flat. You'll have the marks coming off all at the same time. So, I hope that helps. Thanks. Have a great day. You can find me at elkriverharmonicas.com.